in the name of my ancestors. Peace forever and always, and welcome to another edition of the Realities Temple on Earth Internet Ministry. Of course, I am the gatekeeper or the host of this particular program known here on the internet as the mighty, 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 mm, and you snubbing up seven. I am your brother, and hopefully your friend, Talik Ibn Rahm. I am so happy to see this beautiful picture after this most wonderful and informative debate between our brothers, Attorney Malik Shabazz of the New Black Panther Party, as well as Brother Polite of New Covenant. I watched a video whereas after the debate these brothers have come together and are trying to unify and do positive things more so than just have a debate and now I've said what I need to say and I go my way and this person said what they said and they go their way and there is no real benefit to come together for a debate and all it is to the people really is entertainment and you can learn when you are entertained but there is no substance. There is nothing that will cause us to move and progress forward. Because there is no progress unless the two who are in debate bring themselves together as a unified force. Because not one person, not one organization can heal and uplift this people. It's going to take thousands, if not millions, to raise the millions up out of this horrid condition, this mental death. There is plenty of work. There is plenty of celebrity. There is plenty of fame. And on the other side, there is plenty of bullets in your brain. There is plenty of jail time. There is plenty of getting your ass whooped for everybody. There are so many of you in delusional land, la-la land, that you focus on when people gather together to clap for you and shout your name. But there is another side of so-called black leadership. There is another side of the this, this struggle that will send you to the morgue, that will send you to the hospital, that calls for you to sacrifice, that calls for you to suffer. No more Nintendo, no more Xbox, no more YouTube, no more Facebook. No more driving a pretty car, living in a beautiful house. If you are talking about black liberation, if you truly want to be a free people, somebody must die, somebody must suffer. Ain't no real estate. Ain't no black business. None of these things in and of themselves are going to change your condition. Just make you a more comfortable slave. And that's the bottom line. That's why we continue to sit in the condition that we are in. Because all of you have become comfortable slaves. Go to a debate. Scream and holler and cheer on the side for your favorite entertainer. Then you go right back and live comfortable in the house of the races that you claim is your oppressor. That's why people laugh at black power. That's why they laugh at black liberation. That's why they laugh at black revolution. Because it is the only struggle that contains people 
who have the best of resources, the most educated, the richest oppressed people ever in history. And that's laughable. There has been no other people who complain about being oppressed so rich, so educated, so many resources. And so our activity and our, and our actions do not show or exhibit black liberation or revolution or power. It shows a bunch of slaves that's just mad and angry at their masa. This is not what this ministry represents and it should not be what these brothers represent. I am so happy to see them make an attempt and you try very hard and you do what is necessary, and you compromise, and the new Black Panther Party, you 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 will unite with Brother Polite and Brother Polite vice versa. Y'all come together and begin the process of unification because if you don't unite, it is only continued death for the masses, and in reality, it is death to yourself. However, in contrast, to myself watching Brother Polite and Dr. I'm sorry, Attorney Malik Shabazz make some type of attempt to work together and unify with one another. In opposite contrast, myself making a comment on uh, Brother Samir Shabazz Facebook page he had a post whereas he was asking or making a statement about the black woman is God and I posted my opinion and only wanted a response he made no attempt to respond to what I was what I posted but he made sure that he uh, informed me that he disagreed and these are supposed to be your brothers. This man does not know me. But because he disagreed with what I wrote. And many of y'all are the same. You get angry at people because they disagree with what you say. This is insanity. This is crazy. As long as I have been on the internet. Speaking from this rostrum of real truth. I have never gotten angry at nobody because they disagree with what I have to say. Nobody. But the reason why these people get upset and get angry because they disagree with what you say is because they cannot refute what you say most times. And so the back and forth got sort of nasty. And I started to get nasty myself because you want to act silly, I can act silly too. I can be just as intellectual, but I can also get silly with you. But nowadays, I don't feel like that. So when the brother and many of the people that was posting who was siding with uh, Samir Shabazz start calling me a fool, crazy, and Start calling you out your name because they disagree with what you have to say. I started to go that way also. But then I stopped because I started to talk about his recent interaction with the uh, police department and going to jail. And I can talk about it because I know what incarceration is. Spending 10 years incarcerated. It's not funny. It's not a joke. But I, but I do agree that it sounds hypocritical and cowardly for you to go out in public speaking about kill the babies of the races. But when the adult races, just like Brother Polite said, and whether you like it or not, it makes sense. You will kill a baby. You will kill an infant. But when the adults show up, you tuck your tail between your legs and you go to jail 
quietly like a good boy. How does that make you look? The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, and he taught, don't, uh, what was it? Don't say something that you can't back it up. And that's what many of us do. We always saying something. We always trying to write checks that we can't cash. And it makes us look more silly. It makes us look more hypocritical, more foolish. And overall, the situation makes you look cowardly. You trying to be so tough and bold. But when the man comes, then you run. And then you give him money to let you out of his prison, his jail, when you could have been using those resources to help you in what you claim you want to do. But instead, you're giving your money to the oppressor. So, within the conversation, I did challenge him to a debate. But I don't like to debate black people. I'm not interested in that. I am interested in the unification. If you want to debate about something, Brother Samir, or any of you out there, then let us debate about unification. How can I help you? How can we help us in this struggle? I believe I am the only brother, I'm the only person on YouTube or on the internet. Not only do I post my videos, but I have videos posted by Brother Samir, Brother Malik, Brother Polite, Brother Sanada, Many, many, the Nation of Islam, the Hebrew Israelites, when you visit some of my channels, I have a little bit of everybody because I don't fear your opinion. I will use whatever tool that I can get to help awaken the people. If you don't want to listen to me, maybe you will listen to Brother Samir. Maybe you will listen to Brother Malik Shabazz, Brother Polite, the Hebrew Israelites, the Nation of Islam, anything to get some kind of awakening out of our people. You have 40 to 70 million black people in this country that need to be uplifted and awakened. One voice is not going to do it because all of these people have different keys and some of them will never be awakened. They are going to be your black enemy and they will fight to the death with the oppressor. You're not going to get everybody. And that's just the reality. But I stand for, and this ministry represents unification with the descendants of slaves born in America and all oppressed people. But the number one priority is the black man and woman in America because we are in the worst of shape. We can disagree, but that don't mean you have to disrespect someone or hate somebody because we have a slight disagreement. This country called America was not born because everybody agreed, but they agreed upon common principle. And we should agree upon the common principle that these need to be awakened. These need to be liberated. These need to be free. And we need to bang on this beast to free these who are descendants of slaves that deserve true freedom, justice, and equality. So I can apologize to Brother Samir if he feels disrespected because that is not the intent. However, we should, instead of being angry, we should ask for a more clarification and understanding of a position and maybe perhaps that would uh, result in a better interaction because we should not be enemies when we stand on the same premise. And perhaps you don't know that the premise that this ministry stands upon is the liberation of our people. Either you conquer your oppressor 
or you exodus from your oppressor. Or your third option is to shut the hell up and be the good slave that you already are. That's the bottom line. I am happy to see Brother Polite and Attorney Malik Shabazz shake hands and hug one another. Not in a homosexual manner, <laughs> but in a loving manner to show mutual respect and brotherhood. And I will reach out to Brother Samir Shabazz to do the same thing because we are at war together. And we don't have time for debates about opinion. We can debate about theology and opinion after we get the beast off our back. And even then, it should not result in civil war because that's the next step. If you do get the beast off your back, will you then turn on yourself and create a civil war because we disagree? I agree with Brother Polite that we should not agree to disagree. We should agree to agree on something to have some type of foundation so that we can place these roots into this ground so that the proper tree can make itself manifest for the benefit of our future generations and ourselves. I only have a few minutes, so please allow me to just give my opinion, my thoughts upon this debate between Brother Polite and Attorney Malik Shabazz. Also, I would like to remind you before I go forth that these brothers have organized the Million Youth March in New York City, Harlem, 125th Street and Adam Clayton Powell, I believe, on September the 7th, 2013. That would be uh, next week <clears throat> from the time of the posting of this video. Now, we need Brother Polite. We need Brother Malik Shabazz. We need Angel Snub Nup Seven. We need Brother Minister Samir Shabazz. We need the Nation of Islam. We need the Hebrew Israelite Nation. We need all of us. We need one another. And until you recognize that you ain't going to make it without your brother, you're not going to make it without your sister, then the only thing that you're going to do from now until the time that you decide to unite with your brothers and sisters, the only thing you're going to do is give to the people entertainment. There's much information out here. This is not about personality. This is not about fool showing because that's not going to get the job done. We need each other. I understand that. What we have here is a failure to communicate. Because if you're not communicating about black unity, and I have a problem with that word, black, because black comes up out of Caucasian or pink supremacy. If it was not for the fact that something called white power placed us in this condition, we would not care anything about black power. It was the races that made this a skin color issue, a color issue. So do you really believe that color is going to free you when it was division of color that placed us in the condition that we currently find ourselves in. It is the it is the unification of the oppressed, regardless of color. However, again, because of the horrid condition of the black man and woman in America, we must be given number one priority. But we should not trip on black. We should not trip on African. We use these things 
so that we can have something in common. But it is about the upliftment of a people who have been denied true freedom, justice, and equality and deserve something of their own. Not dual citizenship. I'm an American and I live in Ghana. You deserve your own nation after being somebody's slave for over 400 years. Mistreated, raped, robbed. Denied the knowledge of yourself and others. Treated worse than animals. What we have here is a failure to communicate. And if you're not communicating about black unity, then you have become an enemy to black people. That's why we have a failure to communicate because you are an enemy and your purpose is not the love and the upliftment of black people, but you have another agenda and you use black liberation, black conscience to hide your wicked religion. Got that from Farrakhan. <laughs> your dirty religion. We should not view a debate. We should not view YouTube videos as entertainment, but tools that we use in order to grow the mind, to grow the mentality, and show the seriousness of your situation. And you have yet to become really serious and the people cannot respond to you because they don't see you and I as being serious. You think that some spirit is going to come out the sky and save you. You think that you're going to have a nice home, nice car, wear pretty clothes, and you're going to be made free. There has been no people on this planet that have went through liberation looking pretty. So this is something that's going on in the delusions and the fantasy that you have in your mind. As long as you have this failure to communicate, as long as we decide another brother or sister does not qualify and is not worthy of seeking unification, then the only thing that you do is bring death to those who are already dead. So not only have you died once, but you died twice. And instead of being a life giver, you have become the grim reaper. I want to say or bring something to our attention that I found disturbing in the debate. And I have not watched the whole debate, but the excerpts presented to us by Brother Sonetta from the House of Consciousness. But there was a, a portion in the debate where Brother Malik Shabazz pointed to some brothers in the audience asking them about sovereignty, asking them about the complexity of sovereignty. Do they really understand what that is? And what I found disturbing is that they did not really know. So you have all these people clapping. Go, brother, polite. You telling it like it is polite. Talking about this sovereignty. But they really don't know what it is. And it is not. Brother Malik did not try to embarrass anyone. But we should be embarrassed when we're clapping, <laughs> hollering, and screaming for something we really don't understand. What I love about the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, my first teacher, in fact, really my only teacher, and I did not know him personally, Elijah Muhammad taught me in, in and from his books ever since I was eight or nine years old. But what I love about the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad is that his teaching was written and Elijah Muhammad teach in a manner that a person who was eight or nine years old could understand what this man was trying to teach, what he's trying to say. Now, as you grow older, you begin to see more into what Elijah Muhammad was trying to teach us. But his teaching is so simple. 
a fool really could understand if you could read a little bit and if you listen to what Elijah Muhammad taught if you could not read or write when you hear what the messenger of Allah had to present to the people that's why they responded because it was easy to understand and if you ask any of the followers of Elijah Muhammad they could explain what they were taught because it's it was made simple. We should be cautious of somebody, and I'm not accusing Brother Polite of this, but we should be cautious of anybody who brings to us a complex teaching because most of the time when people try to make something complex, they are either trying to hide something, they're trying to deceive us, they're trying to make the people dependent upon them for the source of information so they cannot learn on their own again I'm not accusing that of brother polite but when you reach out into the audience and this audience is clapping for brother polite but then when you ask the audience what is sovereignty can you explain sovereignty the way well we don't expect others to explain polite position the way polite can but they have no idea that's a problem that's blind followers that's functional illiteracy you cannot raise a people like that so if you are able to gain true black liberation you cannot have your people like that Free to be an idiot, free to be illiterate, not calling people idiots, free, free to be ignorant. Again, we need to we need to go beyond entertainment, personality, somebody the way they articulate things, the way they speak. You need to care for yourself. And make sure that you understand because if you understand, maybe you would not even agree with this man no more. But since you have no understanding and you're just going by hype and the wonderful way somebody is entertaining you, then you're nothing but a blind follower. Nothing but what they call sheeple. I would like to say to attorney Malik Shabazz in his reference to the master teachers and we can have master teachers I wonder what makes them a master many people can be teachers what makes somebody a master teacher however master teachers can be in error master teachers can be wrong Master teachers have only mastered to what they can comprehend. There are people born every day. There are children born every day. And out of these children, somebody will be able to comprehend and give, go beyond the master teacher. As the master teacher, many of them went beyond what they was taught. Bruce Lee had 10 master teachers but Bruce Lee rose above all of them you know about Bruce Lee but you barely know about the 10 master teachers unless you really are into Bruce Lee and you study Bruce Lee's life Bruce Lee rose above those master teachers but master teachers can only go as high as they can comprehend and if you only concentrate on the knowledge or the wisdom of a master teacher, you don't go beyond what they taught. And you don't, you can't comprehend and go more depth into what they brought to us. So Brother Polite is a brother raised among master teachers. And he is striving and trying to comprehend and go beyond what he was taught. 
and bring something new because something new is needed in the struggle because clearly the master teaches what they brought was good but it was not successful because if it was successful the people are still enslaved within oppression because many of the master teachers they brought us wisdom but many of them had personal problems with their ego, their arrogancy and these things since they mastered what the people needed to learn in order to struggle and liberate themselves but because the master teachers were unable to control and deal with something within their own person then the people being sheeples, blind followers, following behind an imperfect person, when that man, when that man or that woman fell, then all of them fell. So when the top leadership of the Black Panther Party fell, the Black Panthers dropped. All of them fell. So when Elijah Muhammad died, the nation of Islam fell. So when Marcus Garvey got deported, all of it went to hell. Because these people, you have blind followers, and we should not want blind followers. We want somebody who can comprehend and go beyond the master teachers and bring forth new strategy, something that the enemy has never seen before. And Brother Polite is correct, and Brother Polite has a good strategy. Use the tools, any tools that you are able to get your hands on, and use it to your advantage. But what Brother Polite must understand that that alone is not going to work. It has to be, it has to be more. You got filling, but you need to put bread and you got other things involved in this sandwich. We have to be able to open up our minds to new ideas. What Brother Polite represents, whether you agree with him or not, is a new strategy, a new way of doing things. But what we have here, and the reason why you cannot progress, because y'all suffer from Willie Lynch syndrome, where you have the old people or the elders, the few that are left, and those who are in the middle, you have a problem with young people, because you believe your teaching from the 1960s, 1950s, 1930s is the way to go. It worked for them. And we're still going through the same thing. Actually, we are not. We're not going through the same exact thing. We are similar, but anything that is similar is not the same. We must open ourselves to new ideas. I was incarcerated. If I stuck with one idea, I would not be talking with you right now. I opened my mind to everything I could get my hands on. I'm going to say that again. When I was incarcerated, I used everything I could get my hands on. Everything. You cannot use just one way of doing things. So what if it worked? Some things work for a little while, then they stop working. So when they stop working, what you gonna do? You got to have strategy. You got to have to be, be able to be flexible in your thinking. You have to be like the martial artist. Just like Bruce Lee taught in Yeet Kune Do, the way of the intercepting fist. You must be able to stand your ground, no matter how that fist is thrown. Stop the fist before it can even get thrown. You don't understand this enemy that you're dealing with. Although what Brother Polite brings to us, it really is not new. But it is a wonderful strategy, and it is a much needed strategy. However, real estate and all this money things that you're talking about 
will not get you out of slavery. In fact, you make mockery. Although you got uh, the brothers, you understand that you was just debating. You was you was like trying to expose Brother Malik because he's an attorney. But when it's all said and done, there has been no people who use the oppressive system in order to free themselves. So you can get real estate. You can get business. You still a slave. You are a comfortable slave. And you cannot speak negative about Brother Malik being an attorney because everything that you do, everything that you say is the law. It's laws. Laws created not by you. You have to know the laws of the oppressor. And Brother Malik was educated in the study of the laws of the oppressor. Myself, I am a jailhouse lawyer. So I have studied the laws of the oppressor. And you study those laws and you try to take them and make them to your advantage. But these things were not designed to free you. They are just tools that you can use to aggravate your oppressor. The ultimate goal should be to exodus from your oppressor. If you are not strong enough, see, there are things that we should that we can say, but you never tell your enemy in the public everything that's going on in your mind and everything that you want to do. So there are things that I could present and say to us. I cannot do it on YouTube and Facebook and Vimeo. You do not tell your oppressor how you're thinking and what you plan to do. Because that gives them opportunity to counter. You think that the oppressor, you think these racist Caucasian people, since they see what you're trying to do, you think they cannot counter, especially since they control the law. They control, they control the real estate. You live in, in their house. This is not your house. So you have a this a great disadvantage because you don't really control nothing. At any time, they could call you a terrorist group and, and take all the things that you work for away from you. Then what do you do? You put all your sacrifice and everything into this just so it can be taken away. It has happened before. Right after the Civil War, black people the descendants of slaves come right out of slavery and black people were progressing far greater than Caucasian pink people. What did they do? They began the process to tear everything black people built and worked for down. Even right now, they are destroying the Civil Rights Act, the Voting Rights Act, all that type of stuff. Y'all Negroes no longer need that no more. They can do that because they gave it to you to begin with. The money you're going to buy your real estate with comes from them. Everything you got comes from out of them. And if they control it, you don't control nothing. So when they decide it's over, what you going to do? We have to begin to think beyond just living in America and being comfortable in America. This is not your home unless you conquer the oppressor. You should be thinking about an exodus. Brother Polite represents black power. Brother, Brother Polite represents black conscience simply because he is a black man and he understands our condition. You might not agree with his personal opinion, but see, don't blame him. That's because you lack your the comprehension. You don't understand because you are loyal to something that you already believe in. 
but you may not have truth. We must be open to new ideas, new way of thinking, new ways of doing things. And the and the most important is if we are not seeking what we call black unification. And I have a, a problem with that word black because black was designed. There are no African people. There are no dark-skinned people that call themselves black that I know of. There are no dark-skinned people that I know of that call themselves African. These come up out of Caucasian supremacy, pink supremacy. I heard a brother and read a, a, a brother where he was saying he does not like the word or the term white or pink supremacy because he does not feel as though Caucasian people are supreme over you. Well, if the white man, if the pink man is not supreme, take his money out your pocket. Don't go to his job. Go to any country without his passport. He is supreme. And he earned that supremacy by kicking all the Africans, all these other people in the, in the backside. So he is supreme. If you and I are boxers, and you can't beat me, every time you get in the ring with me, I knock you out. I am supreme over you. Until you can show you can knock me out. Have you knocked this Caucasian man out? Do he spend your money with your face in his pocket? Is he educated by you? Did, did you enslave him? Or did he enslave you and rob you of the knowledge of self? You don't have to like it. You don't have to like the word. But that is exactly what has happened. And if you don't like it that much, then maybe you will do something about it. Just like he knocked you out, now you get up off your butt and knock him out. We've been sitting around here for 400 years and you ain't knocked nobody out. You have been screaming black power almost 100 years after Garvey. And you still a slave, a black power, black conscious, Xbox playing, go to Disneyland, slave. That's what you are. You know how to put on a show. I was incarcerated for 10 years with these Caucasian devils. They are not impressed by Show. They don't care nothing about you calling them devil. You can call them demon. You can call them any words that you, your little heart desire. When it's all said and done, when they look at you, you are still incarcerated. You still under my control. Now, how you like that? What we have here is a failure to communicate. Some of us are living in the 1960s. This is not the 1960s. We have become so non-creative that we got to bring back organizations and the continued posting of words Malcolm X said. How many times can you watch Malcolm X? How many times can you listen to Marcus Garvey? How many times can you listen to our people, although great? They can't help you no more. They are no longer here. You have to grow in your own mind. That's why many people really don't like polite. And Brother Polite does a very good job in defending his position. 
and he should not have to defend his position. You should want to embrace his position and compromise your position so that we can have a position to knock this beast out the box. I'm not strong enough. Wesley Muhammad is not strong enough. Farrakhan is not strong enough alone. Malik Shabazz, Brother Samir, all of us by ourselves, we are not strong enough to deal with this demon that you really don't understand who you're dealing with. You call yourself a god. You call your sisters goddesses. But what you don't understand, you can call yourself anything that you want to. This Caucasian pink people, they have become gods. And God is nothing but a title that means that which has force and power. They control life and death. And if they decide to kill you today, what you gonna do? Nothing except die. That's all you gonna do. And the reason why you die easy is because you're separated. So the only thing I can do is sit back and watch Brother Samir die. And Brother Shabazz, Malik Shabazz die and Brother Polite die. When the enemy comes for you. Because you can believe this. You think it's going to be easy. You think you're going to buy real estate, get rich, and talk all this pro-black stuff. And everything is going to be glory, glory, hallelujah. When you get to the point where this government believes you are a threat. They will treat you the same way they treat you the way they treat Syria. Or Iran or North Korea. Or Marcus Garvey and Malcolm X and Elijah Muhammad. Y'all live comfortable. You don't think about the FBI knocking on your door and shoot your whole family up. But if you're a black revolutionary, you should expect it and know it and be prepared because it's coming. It's just a matter of time. But you live in delusions and you think it's going to be all comfortable. That's where you're making your mistake. You're going to wear a bow tie and be pretty and have these beautiful meetings. And, and eat bean pie and drink carrot juice. Uh, I, I, I don't eat meat no more. I don't want that dead animal in my stomach. Well, you got a dead vegetable in your stomach. Like what difference does it make? Something must die so, so another life can live. What difference does it make? Dead plant, dead animal. Well, it makes a lot of difference. Well, if it makes that much of a difference, and I will say I'm not going to knock you that plant life is much better, but at the same time, I don't see vegetarians living to be 200, 300, 400 years. Who is the example of all this? It sounds good. And if you're a black revolutionary, why would you care? Because your life could be taken at any moment. So just stay healthy enough for the fight. So what difference does it really make? Do you understand? Y'all getting, y'all so comfortable, you're having babies in the master's house, families. What you getting married and having families for? If you're a revolutionary, if you're a soldier. Because that's selfish. If you really fighting, you know that you could die at any moment. And you got to make a move at any moment. And you got women and children that you got to drag behind. And the women should have a mind. Where when the men disappear, they are the, they are the next level of defense. You don't want these sisters running around all pregnant, big old breasts running around. What kind of fight? What kind of soldier can they be? I don't understand. I don't really believe y'all understand exactly what black revolution.
revolution really is or any kind of revolution. You talk about the Iranian revolution, the French revolution, the Russian revolution, and, and all these different types of revolutions, Haitian revolution, whatever. That was serious business. You are comfortable. Some of y'all never had a scratch. Some of you never been shot. You never been cut with a knife. You never been punched in the face. You never had a fat lip. You never had a traffic ticket in your life. What you going to do when the enemy comes for you? You're not really ready. You're talking about go back to Africa, but none of you are making no attempt to go back to no Africa. You want to go to some African nation so you can still have your Xbox, your Nintendo, your little funky computer, and live in another man's house. I do not want to live in somebody else's house. After 400 years, the black man and woman, the descendants of slaves born in America, you deserve your own nation. You make the rules. You give your money its value. You say what can and can't be done. You learn how to agree. Not learn how to disagree. You learn how to agree and build your nation. Based on what? Based on what you learn from the races? Based on what you learn in Ghana, Ethiopia, from the Sudan? Whatever? You might as well stay in the condition that you are in. Because these people are brand new people and deserve a brand new knowledge. And none of the master teachers can give that to you because that was not their job. In religion, it says that the kingdom of heaven is in you. And what everything that we need in order to bring ourselves to true liberation and to bring into existence our, our new reality it's in us, not in a divine person, not in a divine organization. The answer to your problems, the answer to that which will bring into existence a new reality is within the 40 to 70 million black people in this country. Once they are liberated and, and are able, they are able to obtain their right state of mind. Be proud of yourself. Not because I'm related to somebody from Kemet. I'm related to Shaka Zulu. Be proud of yourself. And your ancestors will be proud because you're able to show that you came from greatness. Not because you try to copy what they said and done because it, it's already in your DNA. It's part of you. And now you begin to reflect yourself. Not copy what somebody else. Not try to claim other people's history. Because you got or have the same DNA. That's not what it's about. If you cannot conquer, then you should want to exit this from your oppressor. And if you do not want to exit this from your oppressor, just make a business, buy some real estate, so that you can live comfortable. There are many black people doing that right now. What is it that you really want? Do you want to be liberated in your own nation? Or do you just want to be a comfortable slave? Make up your mind. And you need to understand this these Caucasian people who you're dealing with. They are very, very smart. They are the God of this world. They are the ones that have force and power. And they have the power of life and death in their hands. 
But if you understand the snake, then you can avoid the venom. But this does not mean that you will not be bitten by the snake, but wise enough to have anti-venom. Wise enough to know the nature of that snake. So we need every tool at our disposal. We need all these minds, not mind. We need all these brains to come together and they will give you and we will come up with the proper solution. That will work. It will not fail. But as long as you live in the 1960s, as you believe that you can be liberated using the oppressor's laws, using the oppressor's money, there has been no people on this planet that have been made free within the system of their oppressor. Has not happened, will not happen. There are some things that I would like to say, but I'd rather keep them to myself. You must grow. And what you going to do with your freedom once you get it? The same thing you're doing right now? What you think the result going to be? The same thing except now you have a black slave master. These black people no longer deserve to be enslaved by a Caucasian people or a black face. If the only thing you want to do is give us slavery... Be hiding, be hide, hiding behind black liberation, then we might as well stay exactly where we're at and shut up and just try to make it as usual in a racist society. With that said, again, I apologize to Brother Samir Shabazz if he felt as though there was some disrespect because that was not the intent. But I really don't care much for debating black people. I want to debate the oppressor and all these Uncle Tom Dark European Negroes who are our, our enemies. We are on the same side. We should strive for black unification. You should stop hating people because... They have a difference of opinion or a new strategy because in our situation, we need a new strategy. We need a new way of looking at things. Those who are trapped in the past, you got to let them go, brothers and sisters. It's not getting you nowhere except <laughs> claps. And a clap has never freed nobody. Period. We need the wisdom and experience of our older people, our elders, as well as the new, fresh blood like that of Brother Polite and those who are younger than Brother Polite. But the younger brothers cannot develop and they cannot rise like they should when their elders are acting a damn fool, acting stupid and silly. You had your time. You did what you could do. Let it go. Now, groom the young people. Now it's their turn. And help them. Instead of running around here trying to continue to get glory for yourself. The sun for you is going down. Be proud and happy that a new generation with strength and vigor can do the job and accomplish the job that you couldn't. Be happy for them. Is that not what you say or claim? That's what you was fighting for? Or are you fake? Hmm. <laughs> Thank you, brothers and sisters, for listening. This is your brother, Tony Kim Ra. Think about it. Jot down your comments. This was and is the Reality's Temple on Earth.